In Unity, you build and run your project, which takes a very, very, very long time just to see your final game result. But in Wonderland Engine, you just hit play and it will instantly auto package and done. Your final game result is exported and built. Hello and welcome. In this tutorial, I will show you step by step how to switch from Unity to Wonderland Engine. For those who don't know, Wonderland Engine is built from the ground up to support web games, including WebXR. XR stands for both virtual reality and augmented reality. And web obviously stands for the web. So your games and projects will work on almost all platforms directly in the browser without any installs by the user. Having said that, let's get started. First, let's download and install. So you go to Wonderland Engine website and you go to download, choose your operating system, for example, Windows, and done. You're downloading the last version. After downloading, you open the installer, here it says that Wonderland Engine is already installed. Do you want to uninstall the old version and install the new one? Yes, for me. Next, I agree. And you choose the location, whatever location that you want, and then next, and then install, and it will install. So for Unity, if we want to create a project, we go to the Unity Hub, and then we click on New Project, choose the template that we want, name the project, choose the location, and, and now we have our new Unity project. For Wonderland Engine, we click on it and it instantly opens. We go to New, we choose our project name, let's call it our project for example. We can choose the path, the default path or a new path that you want. Let's choose VR template because I want to show you the powerful side of WebXR. Click Create and done, we have our project. So in Unity, if you want to move your scene, you press right click on your mouse button and it rotates the scene. You press W, S, A, D to move. It's exactly the same in Wonderland. So in Unity, if you want to change the camera speed, you go here, you increase it. Maybe let's make the maximum uh, 20, for example. And it increased. In Wonderland Engine, you just increase it from here. Perfect. Here in Unity, we have the outline or the hierarchy of the objects that exist in the scene. Like for example, we have here the camera and we have the light here. So this is the outline. And here we have the same thing in Wonderland. We have the floor plane here, we have the cube, the cone, sphere, etc. All the objects exist here. In Unity, in the right hand side, there is the settings for each object. For example, here is the transform. If you want to move it in the X axis, Y axis, Z axis, and we can move it from here. It's the same thing here in Wonderland. Also for the rotation, we press R and then we have our rotation gizmo here. Reset rotation on this button. In Unity, we press E instead of R. And we have our component settings here. So if you want to change the colors, for example, you can do that from here and so on. So the settings exist the same in Wonderland Engine. Here we have the component mesh because this is a mesh. And here we have our mesh here. If we want it to be a sphere here, if we want it back to become a cube again here, and we change the material from here, yellow, pink, anything. So in this side, it's the settings side or the properties side of the objects. Down here in Unity, we have the assets browser. We have all our assets here. This is scenes. If you want to create a new folder, for example, let's call it script folder, for example. In Wonderland, it's the same. It's the asset browser here. We have, by default, the models folder here, the JavaScript folder here, and here we put all of our scripts. And this is our scene here in Wonderland Engine. This is our scenes in Unity. If we press that, show in Explorer, we find our project here, our Unity project here. Same thing with Wonderland. Right click and show in folder, and we will see our folder here. Here is our scene, here is our folders, here is our JavaScript folder, and so on. Next, let's talk about creating objects. So. In Unity, if you want to create an object, we press right click on the roots here, game object, 3D object, and then we choose, for example, cube. And these are the properties of the cube object. The material, the mesh renderer. So in Wonderland, we have the same thing here. We go add object, we can add light, mesh, collision, view, camera, physics body. So let's choose mesh. And in mesh, we go and choose our mesh, like cube, for example. 
and then we choose our material yellow for example and then we have it we press s to scale g to move and we have it here delete it and if you're wondering what's this uh, green lines here it's the collision so in this floor plane we have a collision which enables us to collide with the floor and you can disable it in the viewport from going to debug and then collision shapes now we don't see it okay perfect now if we want to start play in unity we go here press on play here and then we have our game here and we press the pause in wonderland engine we go here press this and it will instantly open the browser for us with our full packaged game and here by default we have the teleport controller here you can change it to any controller that you want for example if you want to have an fps controller you can have it and so on so what if we have a vr headset and we want to start our game in it all that we are gonna do is connect our vr headset to our pc via usb cable type c and then go to wonderland engine choose our vr headset device and instead of our local device here so i have metaquest so it's here and then we press play and we will have it immediately opened in our vr headset browser and when we press you see this vr little button when we press it we enter into the vr world here and we have the report here see and the amazing thing that this is all in the browser so yeah perfect let's go back to our local device and, and also we have the console log here so anything that happens here we have the console in unity here we have the console and of course everything is movable so you can move the console here and now we have a bigger asset browser so now let's create a material here in unity you go right click create material 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 yes now we have your new material here call it for example blue and you see the properties here it changed the color to blue you drag and drop the material in the object and you have it here in wonderland engine it's a little different here we don't create them from the asset browser but we create them from views resources and here we have all our resources so meshes we have all our meshes images we have all the images that are included in the project textures the same shaders materials animation skins pipeline fonts and so on so we go to materials that's what we want create and then blue for example and here we can choose the pipeline of the material by default we have fungal peak and we go here we choose our material that we have just created and now we're able to change it to whatever color that you want here is the diffuse color and if you want the same material to be applied in any other objects we can simply drag and drop it see and we can choose it from the material drop down perfect so control z okay now for the sky like here we have a default sky material in wonderland if you want to create a sky material we go to views project settings and here we find all our project settings we go to rendering and enable sky and we choose the material for it so we will create a sky material here and this time we choose sky pipeline and then we choose our sky material you will notice that our sky will be like all pink because we didn't set the texture here but we don't want our sky to be textured so we want it to be a gradient color so we go to the pipeline to view all the materials pipelines we go to sky and instead of texture we want to have a gradient sky so we choose gradient and now we have our sky and we can change the color of it to whatever we want for creating scripts in unity we go to our objects and we add component new script and we call our new script example our script create an ad and then we have our script here we can open it by clicking here edit script and it will open in our default ide which is visual studio code in our case let's make it bigger so you can see better okay in wonderland engine we go to javascript folder and we have the option to either create new javascript or create a typescript component wonderland engine supports both for me now i will choose javascript and call it our script and we choose our object here then we just drag and drop our script here like we delete it from here and we can also add it from here our script here you will find the default scripts but our script is here 
we press it, edit source, and then we will have our script opened here. So this one is in JavaScript, unlike Unity, which is in C Sharp, but it's typically closed. Here in Unity, we have the imports. We have the same import here in Wonderland Engine. Here we have our class, and here we have our class. Here we have the start function to be called when the game starts, and here we have the update function, and in Wonderland Engine we have the same. We have the start function, and we have the update function. Also, in Wonderland Engine we have the initialize function, which will be helpful in initializing things before the game starts. And we have the on register here. As in Wonderland Engine, unused components are not part of the final package to save the load space. So if your component needs to create any other components, they should be registered here. And here we have the properties or, or the public variables in Unity. So you see this one, it's parameter. And we go here, here we have this exposed variable. Set by default to one and it's here. So for public and private variables, in Unity, if you want to create a public variable, you go here and we write public float, we declare it, we want it to be float, and then we call it uh, speed. And then we will have it here, a float speed. We can set any number that we want. It's the same thing in Wonderland, but in Wonderland engine with JavaScript, you declare the variable here. So for example, if I want another variable, float variable, public one, write this, property, and then we choose any property that we want. For example, float, and we set the default value to be, for example, uh, five. Control S save, and then we have it here. You see, speed five. And we can change it from here. Perfect. So this is the public variable in Unity and in Wonderland Engine. And in Unity, if we want to have a private variable, we will not write public in it. Uh, for example, string private name. See, it's not publicly exposed. And here in Wonderland Engine, we go this private name equal string. We hit save and then we go, we can see it here because it's a private one. Okay, perfect. Read this, read this. Also, this is not a JavaScript coding tutorial, so I don't want to go in depth about that. But there's a lot of awesome and easy to follow JavaScript tutorials out there. Like if you know C Sharp, it will be pretty easy for you. And the powerful thing about JavaScript is that anything that works on the web, we can code it here. So if you want to import any JavaScript library, you can do that here. So anything that web-based, we can implement in our game and our projects. So it's pretty awesome, actually. But let's create a simple code here. So, for example, we want our object to be rotated in each frame. How to do that? In Unity, we will go to update function and then we write transform rotate. So we want to rotate the y-axis with our variable speed. And we want it to be in word space. We hit save, we go to Unity, and then we set the speed here for, for example, for one, and then we hit play. And then we have our crazy rotating cube here. In Wonderland Engine, in JavaScript, it's pretty close. We go to the update function and we call this object, the object that we are in, which is the cube object that have our script in it, this object and rotate axis and, we, and you see there's an autocompletion here, rotate axis, angle, degree, object. So it will rotate the object around an axis using degrees. And we have documentation here. It says what it needs. It needs an axis and it needs degrees. So we want to rotate on the y axis and the speed, we want it to have this speed. That's it. We hit save and we just refresh the page and boom. And of course, if you want the speed to be frame independent, in Unity, you can multiply it by delta time like this. And in Wonderland, you can multiply it by delta time like this. And we increase the speed now to work with the delta time. We hit save, it auto packages. We refresh the page and done. Wonderful. Save. And the great thing about Wonderland engine is that you just like change your stuff and you press Control S and you go to the browser and it's Refresh done, it's, it's saved, you see the result immediately. 
And let's go a little more advanced here in Wonderland Engine. Let's create a new public variable, an object, for example. And then we reference this object, the sphere object, and change its material from this script, from this cube, our script. So we go here and we create a new public variable. Let's call it sphere object property. And this time we want object property. See? We reference our object here, sphere object here. And now let's create a new public variable. Let's call it sphere material. And we want this property to be material. So go here and we choose our material to be like blue, for example. Now, on start, when the game starts, we want this sphere object that we just created, we want to get its component, we want to get the mesh component. If you go to sphere, you have, you have here the mesh component. Mesh component. And we want to get from the mesh component, we want to get the material. So, here is the material that we want to get from the mesh component. Dot material. And we want to set it to our new created sphere material here. This sphere material. This will happen when game starts. We control S, save, refresh the page, and boom. We have it blue instead of green. And if we want it to happen after two seconds, for example, we set time out. We put our function here and we make it happen after two seconds. Refresh the page, and then we have it green, and after two seconds, it will, boom, it becomes blue. Perfect. And for debugging, because it's web JavaScript based, uh, you can simply go right click, inspect, and you will see all the debugging information that you need here. So for example, we go here, on game start, we console log, you're wonderful. Hit save, start, and see, you're wonderful. Aww. And you can also add breakpoints for debugging. Like you can go to sources and to your script, and you add the breakpoint to any line of code that you want. See? And if you want to have this inspect window in Virtual Reality 2, all you have to do is to go to Chrome, inspect, open your game in your headset, make sure USB debugging is enabled, and you will see your tab here, inspect. And you'll see your VR tab here. You're wonderful. Wonderful. Finally, all the documentation, you will find it here in Wonderland Engine website, JavaScript API, Object 3D, for example. And then we will find functions that we need here. For example, our function here, that we got it here. Here. And here the description of it. And we have a very beautiful written guide for Unity developers to become more familiar with Wonderland Engine. You will find it in the link in the description. So yeah, thanks for watching and welcome to Wonderland. Subscribe for more tutorials and join our Discord server where we have a wonderful community of developers who would be more than happy to help you with any potential question. See you in the next one.